This video is about the order of operations. Basically, order of operations allows you to know what to do first in a math problem. Take a look at this example. 6 times 4 over 1 plus 2 plus 6 minus 2 squared divided by 2 minus 11. There's all kinds of stuff going on here, and it turns out that the order in which you do the things is definitely going to affect the outcome. Um, while it may seem most reasonable to just always go from left to right as you would if you were reading a book, it turns out that this would be incorrect. Instead, there's actually a specific order in which you're supposed to carry out the operations, hence the term order of operations. So here it is. First parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then addition, and finally subtraction. So that's the order of operations. It's pretty important to remember, but fortunately, there's a good mnemonic device that can help you do just that. See how an acronym is formed by the first letter of each word? P-E-M-D-A-S. PEMDAS. Now we can do some actual math using PEMDAS as our guide. So, according to PEMDAS, we're going to start off by taking care of everything that's within the parentheses. However, before we do that, there's actually one thing we have to do first. See this fraction bar? It turns out that the fraction bar actually implies grouping, which means that we need to put some parentheses around the top and the bottom to help us remember to do those things first, like this. Fraction bars always imply grouping, so maybe it would be useful to think of there always being invisible parentheses on the top and the bottom of fractions, or whatever works for you. Anyway, um, now that we took care of that, we're ready to proceed. Doing everything in the parentheses means that I'm going to replace the 6 times 4 with a 24, the 1 plus 2 with a 3, and the 6 minus 2 with a 4. For the sake of readability, I'll just rewrite the expression on the next line down. Also, since we're finished with the parentheses step, I'll just go ahead and check that off the list. So what's the next item? Exponents. Are there any exponents in the expression? Yes, there is an exponent on the 4, so I'll rewrite that as a 16, move the expression down one line, and check exponents off the list. Alright, great. So the next thing we have to do is multiplication. And actually, I don't see any multiplication, so we can just check that off and move on to the next item. Looks like division is next. Now, here you need to be a little careful, because it turns out that there's actually more than one way to indicate division. There are, in fact, two instances of division in this expression, but they're just written in different ways. So we're going to divide 24 by 3, which will give us 8, and we're also going to divide 16 by 2, which will give us 8. Now, I can check division off my list, too. At this point, I imagine that you're starting to get the idea. We only have two operations left, addition and subtraction. Addition comes first, like so, followed by the final operation of subtraction. This leaves us with our final answer. We're done. What this means is that the whole big expression that we started off with can be rewritten simply as 5.